All right, this episode is titled The Clock King. It came out on the 21st of September, 1992. Directed by Kevin Altieri, written by David Weiss, and animation by Sunrise. Featuring Kevin Conroy as Batman and Bruce Wayne, Bob Hastings as Commissioner Gordon and the truck driver, Lloyd Bochner as Mayor Hamilton Hill, Efren Zimbliss Jr. as Alfred Pennyworth and the Judge, Marie Devon or Mary Devon as Summer Gleason and Miss Perkins, Jeff Bennett as Office Boy, Cab Driver and the Cop, and finally Alan Ratchkins or Ratchins as the Clock King. Honorable mentions here, Sunrise animated this episode, and they previously animated episodes that we've reviewed, which were Pretty Poison and The Cat and Claw Part 1. Director Kevin Ortieri has been credited previously on this podcast, as well as a reoccurring guest, so go back and check out those episodes if you haven't yet already. And finally, writer David Weiss wrote this episode. This is the first time he showed up on this show. He's written other Batman episodes, which were The Strange Secret of Bruce Wayne and If You're So Smart, Why Aren't You Rich? Two of my like top episodes, those to come, which I'm looking forward to reviewing. Now, it's interesting that you said that this was animated by the same people that did the Cat and the Claw one, because there was a Scooby-Doo-ness to some of this, of the way people walked, and just like the Scooby-Doo-ness of the assistant in the Cat and the Claw, when she, like, remember when she walked oh, to drink, like, yeah. the glass of lemonade? And I'm thinking, does this studio, like, I don't know, do they make Scooby-Doo? And, and like, they, they might. have, like, a base walk that they just, like, copy and paste for the anim- animation? Not literally yeah, cotton paste, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I think um I think you might be I think you might be right there. There's because there's one point where Batman's walking um into the vault, I believe it is, and like the way he's like walking sideways is that Scooby Doo walk. Yeah, it's kinda of like the shoulders are like swaying a bit more and it's a bit clunky as well, the way he's moving. Yeah. David Weiss is also known as one of the head creators and writers of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so he spearheaded mm. most of those episodes, which is really cool. Plus, he, had, he wrote episodes of James Bond Jr., Transformers, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, He-Man, and Mighty Ducks, and he passed away in 2020 at the age of 65. Oh, I hope that wasn't anything to do with COVID and, and that date. Um, but that's quite a legendary run of childhood shows, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he. I mean, being one of the head creators of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like one of the biggest cartoons ever, like that's awesome. So uh, yeah, we'll see him appear as another. <laughs> and Batman, yeah. A couple other writing creds that we'll see in other episodes to come. All right, some acting creds here. All returning characters have been credited previously on this podcast in their first appearances, such as Mary Devon as Summer Gleason in Christmas with the Joker, or Lloyd Buckner as Mayor Hill in On Leather Wings. So go back and listen to those eps if you're interested in learning more about those voice actors. As far as new credits go for this episode, we've only got one, which is Alan Ratchins, who plays the Clock King, and he's also known for playing Tony Moss in the movie Showgirls, Douglas Brackman in L.A. Law, and Norman Osborn in the Spectacular Spider-Man cartoon series. Spectacular, spectacular Spider-Man. Spider-Man. So yeah, Clock King is also Norman Osborn in that show. That's an interesting range of I voice I am there. Norman Osborn. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Why are you going under dwellers with the Clock <laughs> King? I know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, utility belt of fun facts. Bruce Tim was not a fan of the color choice that the animation studio used on the Clock King suit, as he felt like it made him look too normal. Instead, he wanted him to look more like a supervillain with something like maybe like a, I don't know, a crimson suit or something like that. But I found the normalcy of his suit to be the most appealing part of this episode because it's a true normal, like it's a very real world scenario of a, a guy has been pushed to the limit and becomes a quote unquote supervillain, uh, but is a, just a regular guy. I agree with you. I think that the suit doesn't matter. He's not a fashion guy trying to make a statement, right? He's just like brown suit. That's done. Like, it's part of my schedule. Like, get dressed, same brown suit every day. You know, that type of routine. But I guess he does get put the glasses on, which makes him, like, uh, the quote-unquote, like, supervillain, right? Because he's got little clocks on his glasses. He's like, can't be bothered with a crimson suit, but... I, I'll jazz up my glasses a little bit. There we go. Now, now I'm a villain. <laughs> no one will recognize me. <laughs> it's true. Uh, the Clock Tower Battle, storyboarded by Brad Raider, is an homage to Castle Cagliostro, which is something I've never heard of. But apparently, Kevin Altieri said that the movie, which is Ca- Castle Cagliostro, is what got him into animation. So he was very happy doing a special effects work um, for this episode. And then we've got The Clock King is an original villain from DC Comics. Though his character is much different from the animated version, both characters are efficient experts who make uncanny use of timing, but the original Clock King was named William Tockman 
and his crimes were motivated by the need to provide for his sister when he mistakenly believed he was dying of an illness. The Clock King first appeared as a rogue in Green Arrow, but is probably best known for his membership in the Suicide Squad, and thus a rogue of Batman and sometimes the Justice League. Oh wow, I didn't realise how deep his lore went there. I know, Suicide Squad's kind of fun with the Clock King, that makes sense, because he's got a shtick, but it's not, like, enough on its own, but as part of a team, that makes sense. I guess so, he'd always be like, guys, we're running behind schedule, we need to, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so annoying, everyone's like, we know, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> he's like, this is all I do. Um, you guys bother King... me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> What's the clock in doing? I'm serving time! <laughs> Get it? Anybody? <laughs> the Clock King's name, Temple Fugit, is a play on the Latin expression Tempus Fugit, meaning time flies. And this episode breaks the status quo by having Batman making all his appearances by day. Yes, very strange that we get Batman by day. And also a bit loose of Bruce to be walking out of his car, fully dressed as Batman. Like, anybody could see that. And my favorite is that they drive through Gotham traffic midday. And someone must look over at, like... I'm pretty sure that the Bruce Wayne's car would probably be embroidered like Wayne, Ma you know, Wayne family plaque on it or something, right? Absolutely. I totally agree with you. Yeah, you, I just, you just look and there's just like a posh English man and he waves at you. And in the background, <laughs> it's just Batman who waves at you as well. I like, what if someone walks by and they're like, hey, is that Batman in a Rolls Royce? And who's that guy with him? He's wearing a name tag that says Bruce Wayne's butler. Like, what? <laughs> this guy? And the, the license, license plate. plate literally says Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> says Bruce the Juice Wayne. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce da juice on it. Bruce two juice. I am Batman. But with a four instead of an A. <laughs> I did love Alfred being a part of the adventure in this one. I thought he was a great yes. replacement Robin. Yes, he reminds me in this episode more of, um, what's his name? Lucky, no, Happy Hogan from oh, Iron yeah. Man. Just like being like uh, his personal bodyguard and traveling around with him. Um, yeah. It was, you know, very, very old school Iron Man vibes. But this episode, though, was very Batman 66. You had like knockout gas being used during the robbery. You had a villain using puns like for his gimmick the whole time. And you had Batman out in broad daylight for the entire episode. Like yeah. nothing's more 66 than that. Yeah, you're very right. The music, uh, I think the Clock King's theme is okay, but it's much better in his next appearance when he comes back in Time Out of Joint. That's when it's like... And we didn't get that in this one. So he does come back then. He does. He does reappear in another so, episode. So, I mean, is this the only episode we've seen so far where the villain gets away at the end or the whole show? Or... Oh, I think you're right. Because, yeah, Killer Croc went to to jail didn't he and then you had scarecrow got busted joker's been busted every single time oh buddy i think you're right i think and this Ivy is and, and two-face and yeah uh what about um the first episode with the man bat did he get away oh wait no batman was like i cured him here you go back into society you go do you remember okay well that means he's still caught then yeah exactly yeah he was cured so i guess Clayface, you're right this did is he the capture first it melted. Clay no, face. you're right. Clayface got away at the end. You're right. Yeah, he, he was. The, he was the woman at the end. Remember, and then he yes. like laughed. And the Clayface got away. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, everybody. It's December. <laughs> It snowed so, last night. The uh, the the music though. The one thing I did figure out is the end fight had uh, making Christmas vibes to it. It was like bam 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 bam. It was doing like that during really? the whole thing. Yeah, I, it was I really noticed cool. that. Yeah, and I was like, oh, Danny Elfman, Shelley Walker. You know, like it's they all blend, so that's cool. So, Clock King, what do you think of this character? I dug it. Like I, I went on this with low expectations. And I had fun. I mean, the opening of the episode is very like strangers on a train with like two people meeting on the train. Ooh. It also it also reminded me. I don't want to need to bring it up again, but of Mad Men when uh, Pete Campbell is on the train and he's always chatting to this one guy, and he, the guy has no idea that Pete Campbell's been sleeping with his wife. It's just like that, like traveling into Gotham, like two mid to upper class guys like chatting like that's such an old school vibe you know and it was i just love it's like what is the what is this episode trying to say that 
don't yeah. fuck around. If you got a schedule, stick to it. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. like your whole life would get fucked. Like the moral of the story was like, you know, he was like, just get a bit loose, live a little. And the worst things happened to him. He fucking didn't stick to time. And then that went to, like to the court. And like the guy was like, you owe all this money and you're fucked. And it was just like the worst outcome. And that's why I love when he turns and looks at the camera and just goes, ah, and it like zooms in on his face because he is the most frustrated anybody could be at that point. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was so funny. And also his lawyer looked a lot like Howard Stark. And there's another Iron Man thing. He had like the pencil thin mustache and like the suit. And I loved how when he lost the case, the lawyer just looked at him, shrugged his shoulders and walked off like, not my fucking life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I just think it's so funny. Like that, it, it was literally the worst possible scenario. I thought he was going to wake up and be like, oh, thank God that was a nightmare. Like, because I'm sure he's been tempted his whole life to break the cycle, right? Like, what if I didn't have my cup of coffee at three o'clock? Like, everything would be fine. And the fact that it's the worst possible thing that could happen to him is just very funny to me. So I don't blame him for being a supervillain. And I was kind of rooting for him in this episode. I was like, fuck them all up. But the thing is, is like, why did... Like, Mayor Hill gave him the worst advice ever because he's the mayor of Gotham City. Like, 12 million people depend on him. Was he the mayor when he gave that him... that Because he said he was... Just running a law firm because it was seven years before, wasn't it? Oh, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Maybe he wasn't the mayor, but still crappy advice. Like, dude, you're, you're like the guy that should not be like, Hey, relax. Like, screw your schedule. Forget about the $20 million indictment. Chill. Like, what is that $20 million indictment? that Clock King had against his company. Like, why? What was he like, doing? Oh, I was I was dumping toxic waste, but never mind about that. I'm still a, a nice, innocent man. Like, what What was his business? What was he doing? I don't even know what that business was. Timeshares! <laughs> I would hate to work for the Clock King, though. Like, imagine, like, he watched your every move. Like, he knew how long it would take to make a copy. If you're using the toilet, like, he's like, ah, it's Wednesday, which means yesterday was Taco Tuesday. Alex will be spraying down the bowl for precisely four minutes and 32 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how long it takes to spray down the bowl? All right, I knew you say so. Like but you know talk- what? You would get on his good, you become a number two quite quick if you're like, four number minutes two. and 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> number two. <laughs> if you did it in like uh, three minutes and 59 seconds, he'd be like, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> Or maybe he'd hate that. He'd be like, no, you're throwing up. You're early now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's taking it all into account. If he tried to time you taking a shit, he'd lose a whole day of work. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 15 minutes. What the fuck are you still doing in there? Oh, I pooed a bit ages ago. I just sit in the toilet. This is my time. Time! <laughs> And also, if those papers were so important, why didn't he make the guy make copies of them? Like, he lost them in the park, and then he was like, screw, yeah, how, make a copy how of How are they the only copies? Seriously, like, come on, dude, that was ridiculous. So I love Alfred poo-pooing the food at the fundraiser that the mayor hosts. Like, do you think he was intimidated by the food? Like, if Master Bruce prefers theirs over mine, then I might get the sack. <laughs> That's why I've been doing extra duties, like driving him around as Batman as well, and <laughs> taking him to get his cape washed, and... <laughs> Listening to the radio and the scanner and doing my little duties. Oh, you fool, you're supposed to wash the cape yourself, not take Bruce to go get it washed. Oh, Alfred, you fool. I love Alfred's sass as well after the car accident. Like, he doesn't scream and yell at the guy, just calmly fires off, like, a sarcastic remark and, like, immediately thinks it's his fault as well. Like, I better immediately lay the blame on a taxi driver or else the fender bender will be coming out of my salary, you know? Like, he's like, oh, a taxi, taxi drivers don't stop at uh, red lights anymore, I see. Well, imagine if Bruce Wayne was like Larry David where he's, like, a billionaire, but he's such a stickler for, like, money. <laughs> Well, it's like, Alfred, this, this fender bed is going to cost us like three grand. Like, oh my God. It's like, sir, you fart three grand every millisecond. I don't think you've even seen three grand in your life because it's, that's like a pocket change for you, sir. Pennies. Pennies on the pound and I'm a penny worth. Hey. Hey, I'm worth every penny. That's why you hired me. Isn't that right? <laughs> Uh, also, Clock King's plan is, I think, rubbish. Like, he plotted for seven years, and his plot is to, like, take down Mayor Hill to start with by causing a traffic jam. Like, he's like, ah, the traffic jam, because everyone blames the mayor. Like, they call him, like... I think him, it's a like, snowball effect, though. I don't think it's, like, this is this is the end. It's, he, he's constantly digging into him. That's why he has the poster that says, like, no mayor or whatever. Yeah, D-elect D-elect. Mayor Hill. Yeah. I think he's just constantly making him look bad. That's his thing. 
Yeah, I guess it did work as well because all the traffic, the people in traffic were blaming the mayor. They were like, hey, that's Mayor Hill over the hill. People are petty. He's- if I got caught in traffic and, I, and someone was like, it's that guy's fault and he's up for re-election, I'd be like, fuck that guy. I'm not going to vote for that brick. <laughs> I love how the clock king, like, he just works for you. You're like, his plot, his whole stick, his, it's his whole thing. solid revenge. The guy gave him terrible advice, so fuck him. And Mayor, you know, does anybody really like Mayor Hill? He's kind of shady, right? Like, does he, yeah, he's he not technically done shady stuff, but that dude's getting paid under the table for something. Well, he doesn't care about his kid, Jordan. We know that. He, like, no. let Jordan get kidnapped by a fucking murderous clown. So, yeah, he's he's not the best mayor. Oh, Gotham is arguably riddled with the most crime it's ever had, so not doing a great job on that front. Yeah. <laughs> like, if I was going for this guy, I'd be like, can you keep these? Like, even Batman would be like, for fuck's sake, can you keep them in Arkham? Like, I do you know how long it takes me to capture them? And I've sacrificed my life, my time. I could be hanging out with Alfred or Robin, you know, playing Cluedo. That's that's Alfred's favorite game. And he Cluedo. never gets to play it because I always have to go catch a freaking the Riddler or the Joker. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, Clark Arkham Kings- is privately owned. I can't do it. Oh, oh, it's privately owned, is it? <laughs> I guess Clark Kent's his greatest nemesis. <laughs> yeah. And we put him in like the D for Dookie tier when we were ranking him, but maybe he's gone up a few after this well, episode. I was a bit shocked at how well he can handle himself against Batman. You know what I'm he saying? Thought like, he was so cool when he first confronts Batman. Like, he's just standing there, leaning on his cane, spinning his little pocket watch, using the word time way too much. He, like, yeah, well, that's his he. Thing. He had, like, five locked and ready to go, and he used all five. He wasn't like, oh, that's the best one. He's like, nah, I gotta give them all. I spent mm-hmm. some time developing these. What seasoning do you like on your roast potatoes, Batman? Is it rosemary and thyme? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this fucking guy. I'm reoccurring. <laughs> <laughs> like time! Like time! <laughs> Got him. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I guess... Well, Clock King's got to have some fans, and he's got a fan in you. I, I'm kind of like, yeah, he's an all right but villain. But to get back to what I was saying, Batman like completely confronts him on the top of the clock. Like, gotcha, I'm gonna take you down. And he uses his like sword. He's like, ha ha, and like he knocks Batman off of the clock. Like it's no problemo. The way he moves around like the clock, like he's got some skills. Yeah, he does. And he did say, well, he spent seven years and he's like, I've studied news footage of you and like how you fought. <laughs> for seven years, I went and I trained around the world, Batman, for the greatest clock masters <laughs> and fences. It took me a lot of time, Batman, but I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I love that Batman moment is when Bruce runs up the stairs of the building to get to the rooftop to confront Clock King and you see his shadowy silhouette as Bruce Wayne and yeah. as it goes like up, you suddenly see Batman running. I thought that was cool and you get the that Batman cool. theme. I thought it'd be so funny if when Clock King blindly fell back off the building to land on the 915 train, which is always six minutes early, according to him, that it wasn't early that day. Like, And he just splats down on the train tracks. <laughs> like Batman's and just they, like, And then oh, gets run over by the train. <laughs> yeah. And Batman's like, a gruesome fate for a gruesome man. <laughs> Imagining, like, all the things that Clock King's like, okay, I've studied everything, and just everything goes fucking wrong. Like, on that one day, he's just like, why today? Why? He turns to the camera again. <laughs> you know what? If you think about it, a guy has a traumatic experience, so he dedicates the next seven years of his life to bettering himself to get revenge. Like, who am I talking about here? Batman or the Clock King? They got yeah, a similar they are story. very similar. Yeah, that's true. Well, there's always a certain level of like what Bruce Wayne could have been if he didn't become Batman and all his villains. And I guess he could have become the Clock King. Alfred would have been like, I quit, sir. I can't deal with all these fucking puns. <laughs> <laughs> so we get the return of the infrared Cyclops specs in this episode. We've seen them before on Leather mm. Wings and in the Underdwellers. And I don't think Batman really needed them to find that pocket watch. Like... He looked around and it was just clearly there. I know he zoomed in and he like saw the serial number, which I thought was cool as a way to like track down Clock King's lair and such. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when he first like scans, I'm like, you know, like it's clearly a pocket watch is there. Like that's what set the bomb off, right? Like there's nothing else. So it would have you led to believe, you know, that you never know. It's better be safe than sorry. I did like the scene when he captures Batman and he, and he goes to like open the door. He's like, ah, that would take 11 minutes and you've only got 10. And then he goes to the bomb and he's like, oh, Batman, like that's rigged with explosives. So I know you got plenty of gas masks. So I'm just going to take all the oxygen out. 
Ta-ta. Batman nearly died there as well. He did. Is the Clock King one of his greatest <laughs> arch villains? <laughs> similar <laughs> story, like this, like very similar, and um, just a, a, an absolute force to be reckoned with. Yeah, because every move you're going to make, Clock King's already anticipated it and knows how long it's going to take. So he's obviously built that trap around all of those like contingencies. Mm. Um, yeah, the only question I have here, bud, is he's got this oxygen pump bomb device thing that's going to go off and Batman obviously has to get out of the vault before all of the oxygen's sucked out of the room. I get mm-hmm. that. Cool plot. But why did he use the reel from the cassette tape? To create this like pulley system yeah. to throw a batarang at it, like why didn't he just fucking pick it up and move it? Because picking picking it up could have exploded it. But picking it up with what cassette tape reel isn't yeah. Well, the he same did it. He went it behind. He went behind sandbags and then he did it like oh, in there. case it exploded. Just in case it exploded. That's true. The sandbags. I forgot about that. I, I guess they were full of like coins because they're not sandbags, are they? Oh, that's true. Well, you know what? Very clever of Batman, right? Yeah, okay, I get that. Then moving it and throwing it. All right, because I thought, like, he wasted all of that time fucking creating this pulley system when he could have just picked the bomb up, chucked a batarang at it, and be like, done, I'm out, baby, with only a minute to spare. It's like a bad escape room experience (laughs) where people think they built the best escape room ever, and you're like, I solved that fucker in, like, a minute. I think next time he'll bring a mini oxygen tank with him, right? Next time he goes out. Um, I Which I'm say, surprised he doesn't have, because doesn't he have like a little like Phantom Menace mouthpiece thing for going scuba diving? Yeah, or like Thunderball. That's they oxygen. That. That's oxygen, yeah. So you could just use that, right? But then, no, hang on. The oxygen is being circulated through the water. Oh, okay. In that device. So well, I don't know, stick a fishbowl over your head with water in it. <laughs> That's his new costume, like, Alfred. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need a costume that gives me oxygen all the time. I'll never run out of oxygen again, Alfred. There's the weirdest exchange between the police officer and Gordon as well in this episode. Yes, I noticed this too, and I thought Gordon was an absolute dickhead here. Yeah. A subway train has crashed in front of millions, well, not millions, hundreds of people. Yeah. Super dangerous. It, the, the, the trains are flying everywhere, and once it's over, a police officer runs up to his freaking uh, commissioner <laughs> and it's like oh commissioner only my ju- minor injuries thank god like just basically being like everything's okay and what does gordon do instead of being like oh thank god thank you for that information that no one is in mortal danger instead he grabs the guy by the shirt and yeah. pulls him up to his eye level and it's like i don't give a shit about any of that stuff you <laughs> douchebag where is the person i'm looking for like where's the mayor sh- where's the fucking mayor i would i would not like gordon after that if i was that police officer because I, you know he's just like oh gordon thank god no one was hurt uh, and then he's like oh wait well, i guess gordon doesn't fucking like me then like what the hell <laughs> Yeah, he's like, I worked so hard for this moment, and I thought, like, this yeah. would be our moment where we bonded. And I was like, so guy, you know, told him. Do you know how quickly I had to scan the room to see that no one was hurt? Like, <laughs> it was it was a big job that I did really quickly. <laughs> I was so proud of it that I ran up to you to tell you immediately. And now, I like, you're not going to remember this. I'm not going to get a promotion for this. I did my job really well. This is promoting level stuff right here. I should be promoted. Where's the mayor? Ah, shit. (laughs) I do not know. (laughs) Whoopsie. (laughs) Only may he'll die, thank God. (laughs) That guy sucked, right? He caused a traffic jam on the I-95 last week. If anyone deserved to die in this accident, it was May Hill. (laughs) Imagine being the mayor, though, and, like, you tell someone on the train one morning, take your coffee break 15 minutes later, Mm. and then seven years later, you're about to be crushed by giant clock hands. Like, what the fuck? (laughs) <laughs> Do you think he's giving bad advice to other people, like, through time? Time! Did you say time? <laughs> Every one of them is the clock king. Yeah, they all yeah. have obsessed with time. It's like him at college and he's, like, smoking a bowl with, like, his roommate. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be late for class. I just know it. Man, you just got to, like, chill. Hit this bomb. <laughs> And then, then go to class and everything will be all right. And he's like, okay. And he hits the bong. He misses the class. He gets, he fails the paper, which means he, he gets expelled or no, his grade lowers. He doesn't get the job. He's like, I was going to give you the job, but since you've got this grade on this test and your number one competitor, pass with flying colors, who is Mayor Hill, by the way, future mayor of the city. <laughs> 
Tampa Bay. He goes, ah! through whole, <laughs> <laughs> he goes through his whole life in that scenario. That would be really funny. That would be amazing. He's fucked up like 20 people's lives, just casually telling them to take their break 15 minutes later or be 15 minutes late for something. That's his MO. God, everyone's in such a hurry. Oh, my God. What's the rush? Oh, rat race, am I right? Oh, little rat in the race. You know what the rat, how the drag gets the cheese? Chills. I'm fine. I'm going to be mayor, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, me becoming the mayor, only a matter of time. I'm right. <laughs> I can do a time joke, too. <laughs> so uh, Batman even joins in on the time puns and says, I'm here to clean your clock. Fuel. Yeah. And I was Excuse like, Excuse me, Batman. Yeah, that's, Leave that's the like clock puns to me. <laughs> I deduced that it took you two minutes and 32 seconds to come up with that pun, and I think your butler <laughs> helped you with it. And if I had to judge the joke, I'd say it's a bit guano. There you go. Stick to that lane. <laughs> I'd say it's a bit out of time, Batman. Even that was reaching for me, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, so what did you think of the final fight in the clock tower, then? Oh, it was just, you know, it's it's the classic the show does where it's like, and we have a big set piece battle in the third act, right? Like, yeah, we've yeah. had the planetarium, now we're fighting inside a giant clock, and like, yeah. it'll be something else that's massive, like, I don't know, like, f- fighting in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and like all that type of stuff. It's always <laughs> well, against, something like that. Against Turkey Man or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> gobble, gobble, Batman! <laughs> President's gonna pardon me of all my crimes, just like he pardons a turkey every year. <laughs> and don't cook me with rosemary and thyme. <laughs> it's me, the clock king. I'm here to roast your turkey, turkey man. <laughs> oh, Batman! So, I also, did you notice Batman makes the funniest noise when his legs are tied up by a pocket watch? And I was like, imagine if that's how Batman dies. <laughs> like, just takes out I'm by a pocket you, watch. I don't know if Batman was having an off week or an off day, but clock king was dominating him you could say he was cleaning his clock i was cleaning his clock <laughs> i already said uh, that one. Oh, well, that was a good one <laughs> i'm taking it so clock king falls to his suspo- uh, his supposed death and batman saves the mayor then gordon can't believe that he might have survived but batman thinks it's only a matter of time until we see the clock king <laughs> again the i'm like, like i'm sorry <laughs> no stop it I, i'm gonna disappear now but I, i'm sorry to speak up <laughs> Gordon turns around and looks at Batman. He's like, "You're the Clock King." <laughs> he's, he's, Gordon's like, "This is the guy that's been giving you shit. The guy that like outsmarted you, nearly killed you, like could beat you in fencing. This little motherfucker. He looks like just like somebody cosplaying as the Riddler. Like, come on, man, a bowler hat. You're gonna die by a man in a bowler hat? I knew it was only a matter of time until you started making. Oh, <laughs> that's it. You're under arrest as well." <laughs> That's fine. I'll escape from Arkham like all the other motherfuckers do. Thanks, Mayor Hill. <laughs> yeah, he plays the mayor. <laughs> yeah, everyone's always like, thanks, Obama. It's, oh, yeah. Thanks, mayor. <laughs> ah, gas prices are rising in Gotham again. Thanks, thanks Mayor, mayor Hill. Hill. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Ah, Netflix took the office of a fucking their streaming platform. <laughs> thanks, Mayor Thanks, Hill. Mayor Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, my lasagna's cooked on the outside, but it's still frozen in the middle. <laughs> Classic Mayo Hill Hale. move right there. <laughs> he must have come in here and, and, and changed the, the time that I was cooking. Did you say time? The time? The time has changed. <laughs> but you needed to cook it. It was actually me. Ah, but you think it's the mayor. Ah, my plan is working. Success. <laughs> what time did you set on the microwave, huh? <laughs> okay, that's too many times. <laughs> oh god so that is the end of the episode and buddy like always i ask you is does this make your top three no but i did enjoy it yeah and i now so, now i think uh i would put the clocking high on, on our ranking list now interesting where do you think he would go a b uh, <laughs> c yeah c clock c for clock <laughs> c for clock i burped when i said c <laughs> i don't know if anyone heard that but there you I go. think that's, that's two burps in this that's episode. That's two burps now. I've done while speaking. I am getting older and I cannot control what comes out of my throat. That's what <laughs> yeah. you said. All right, moving so, on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, so we've got our top three, just to remind everyone, is still in no particular order, On Leather Wings, Two-Face Part 1, and Joker's Fever. That is correct. 
All right, so our next episode, Ben will return to review Batman Returns, as we will be doing Batman at the movies. So Ben and I will be reviewing Batman Returns, and we'll be taking a well-deserved break, as he's got a lot of deadlines he's going to meet. And then after that, we will have our final episode of the year, which will be our toy review and ranking episode, which I'm really looking forward to, but I've already started like gathering up some uh, images of toys and going down memory lane. Can't wait to share that with you. That's going to be a lot of fun. That'll be fun, yeah. Then we'll take a break for Christmas and New Year's and probably come la, back. La, 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 la. And your birthday is my And my oh, birthday. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we'll come back probably around mid-January. Have a, a good old break for Christmas and New Year's and my birthday. And then we'll come back with our review of Appointment in Crime Alley. Do you remember that episode? Appointment in Crime Alley. No, I don't. It's the diddle 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 Yeah, that's um, it's kind of like a. There's no major villain. I mean, Ed Asner's uh, Rowan Daggett shows up. Yeah, those are like my favorite type of episodes. I, I like a slower burner. Yeah, you do. It's all like about like. That's where Gotham. we got the Smelly Squad from, and and the, yeah. the the drill and all that stuff. Yeah, the driller. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and the, the, and the, 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 the eye gouge. What was it? What was the joke? The plucker. The plucker! I'm going to pluck your eyes! Ah! <laughs> uh, go back and check out our episode reviews of POV and the Cat and the Claw Part 1 to hear those jokes if you don't know what we're talking about. Wow, you know the episodes? Goddamn. Right. <laughs>